Ever wonder what reflective wall material you should use for your grow tent? Here we're going to investigate that question here on Tobacco University. All right, let's look at some of the reflective wall options. Well, first off, when we're setting up a grow tent or a grow room, may wonder uh, what should we put the what should we put the walls with? Since indoor growing areas will have walls and growers are paying for that light, you want to maximize the efficiency of those uh, light units that you're paying for. Since indoor areas have walls, maximizing the reflectivity of those walls can be a simple way to provide plants more light without increasing costs. Canvas is a high light demand plant, so a good reflective surface is beneficial. Now the data presented here is from the video here on micro, um, microlight.com here. He presents pretty good information. I'm just providing a summary, but I welcome you to check that video out for more information. Now the equipment that he used there, we're looking at a 600 watt HPS with a wing reflector, and he also used a 400 watt LED panel, which was a Mars Hydro. No right reflectors in the fixture, high power purple light fixture there was utilized. Not these exact images, but gives you a good idea. How he's measuring light was with a quantum sensor, the Apogee SQ500 here. So first off, let's start with the control, and that is basically no walls. If we just set up kind of a growing box in a bigger room and put any walls, well, Looking at the amount of light that was gotten and received, uh, 640, uh, this is PPFD is what they're measured in. All other trials will be provided a percent of increase from this baseline level. So 640 and 400 are our baseline. That's if we had a grow area with no walls. Now, if we put the walls up with just a plain wooden wall, which would be kind of our most basic form of walls, well, we get a 7.1. Uh, 81% increase of our HPS and a 5% increase with our LED. And we could see the PPFD readings that we are up to. Now if we upgrade or take those wooden walls and put a well, white paint on that, a matte white paint, we see an 18.75% increase and a 10% increase from those base levels where there were no walls added originally. So again, here we're getting a little bit more. Well, what if we use white marla, which is like a plastic, shiny uh, plastic material? Uh, keep in mind that uh, for HPS, it had the same PPFD uh, as the matte white paint in, on plain wood. So not as much of a benefit there to add the plastic for a high pressure sodium setup, but for LEDs, we saw a little bit more of an increase, 12 and a half over no walls. Now, so there's silver mylar, so instead of getting the white, what about the silver, the aluminum coated plastic? We'll definitely saw an increase both in the high pressure sodium and the LEDs. And what got us the greatest, or what was conveying the data with the greatest increase uh, with that photosynthetic light activity was the silver mylar with the diamond pattern. Very commonly found in grow tint materials, and we can see why. Not only does it increase the amount of reflective light, but also reduces the chance for hot spots. So what is all this data? If we saw it kind of in one area, well, I'll just kind of put it all here in a nice little summary. We can see how no walls was our baseline. Plain wood, white mat, uh, painted on the wood, white marlar, silver marlar, and the silver marlar in the diamond pattern, how that did generate the greatest return there. So if you're a grower looking to set up a grow room, what would I suggest? Well, basically your light source is less important than the wall surface used. While any clean wall surface will benefit over no wall, using silver mylar with diamond patterns results in the greatest amount of light reflected. This material is found in most grow tents, but make sure it is in your growing space. If not, consider adding it so you get the greatest uh, reflectivity of the light, less, less light loss that you're paying for anyway to hopefully maximize your plant production.